So welcome. Uh, we're here to talk about Redwood, which is Stanford's new WordPress theme. I am JB Christie. I'm the Director of Web Development in University Communications, and I've been here about uh, five years or so. And this is the second major uh, branding WordPress theme that I've done since I've been here in terms of open availability. So uh, let me make sure. There we are. So what we're going to talk about today, I'm just going to give you a whirlwind uh, tour of WordPress at Stanford, a brief history. We'll talk a little bit about the previous WordPress themes just to set some context. And then we'll get in talking about Redwood specifically, the new theme. I'll give you a demo of the front end, which will be pretty quick. We'll probably spend most of our time in the back end and the customizer, which is super cool and super fun. And I'll give you a little quick tour of uh, Redwood widgets. And we'll talk about how Redwood was built and who built it. And then you guys get to talk back at me. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So a brief history of WordPress at Stanford. So I started here in 2013, August of 2013. When I got here, Stanford Med had a couple of major um, WordPress sites. The most visible one was the Scope blog, which is a world-renowned medical blog. Uh, let me um, hop out of here and I'll just show you. So Scope blog is a WordPress site and that's been around, uh, I don't know how long, but longer than I've been here. In 2014, uh, law school, launched their site in WordPress after a massive uh, design and development effort. And I think they did an awesome job, it's a beautiful site. Um, in 2016, our team, University Communications, uh, relaunched Stanford News and migrated it. It had been in a custom CMS written by the legendary Scott over there. Um, and we moved it into uh, WordPress in 2016. Uh, and uh, in 2017, June of 2017, we moved Stanford's home site into uh, WordPress. So these are all like major sites that required custom development, custom theming, they were big sites. Um, we also uh, have a couple of smaller sites that are bespoke sites. Um, so the Office of the President, Office of the Provost, Notes from the Quad, our team has uh, probably about 15 or 20 sites that are all WordPress sites. And these are based uh, lightly customized uh, standard themes that are actually available to anyone here at Stanford. So uh, those are some of the sites that have been out there. Um, but Stanford, ever since I've been here, I don't know how long it's been around, but Stanford also has uh, the WordPress installer. Yeah, I wonder if you'd close the door there, thanks. So anyone who wants to uh, can go to tools.stanford.edu, any Stanford person who wants to, and request a WordPress site. And WordPress within a few minutes will be automatically set up in AFS, our Andrew file system, uh, shared file system, and it will get a default theme applied to it. And when last I checked, which was about two years ago, there were several hundred sites, almost a thousand sites had been deployed that way. So um, that's kind of what the landscape here, the WordPress landscape uh, here at Stanford. So we needed some themes for all those WordPress sites. So I mentioned the major sites that have custom themes that we developed, um, but those hundreds of AFS sites and some of our smaller sites, uh, they needed a Stanford look uh, Stanford theme. And the goals of our themes were easy setup. We basically wanted uh, to just give a nice skin to vanilla WordPress. We weren't interested in building out custom fancy features, but we wanted to give a nice uh, skin with an appropriate level of branding. And we have two definitions of appropriate level of branding. We have an official site, official branding for uh, units that really do actually represent Stanford, like the Office of the President, the Office of the Provost. And then we have uh, those hundreds of little AFS sites that have a looser affiliation with Stanford. They still wanna indicate their affiliation, but they don't actually speak on behalf of Stanford, so we don't want that look to actually, um, uh, we don't want them to convey a more official representation than they have. 
And then we build our own sites here in University Communications. So we needed a few features that were just handy for us for the sites that we were building. So in terms of history, again, before I got here, I don't know when Stanford Modern came out, but after Scott's presentation this morning, I'm guessing it was around 2008. So, and um, Modern was probably relevant at the time, uh, but became increasingly less so. So when I got here in 2014, uh, we launched the Cardinal site. And let me show you our Cardinal site. So this is the theme with the more official branding uh, that demonstrates an official relationship with Stanford. And that was available in 2014. And after a few months, we realized uh, there's that whole other marketplace that also wants to just set up, spin up a quick WordPress site, um, but uh, they can't use the official theme. So we modified Cardinal and came up with Lagunita. And really the only difference between Cardinal and Lagunita is this header area here. So uh, the official sites uh, have this lockup area and the uh, more loosely affiliated sites don't have that lockup. So these became available in 2014 and they were pretty sharp looking at the time, but that's five years ago and it's time for a refresh. So, So, uh, along comes Redwood. So, uh, we have very similar goals uh, with the Redwood theme. Again, we want it to be pretty easy to set up, just plug and play. Uh, we want to support an appropriate level of branding. Uh, as I mentioned in our previous iteration, we had two completely separate themes, and the only difference between them was the level of branding, the lockup up, up at the top. And that was a lot of code replication. And Yvonne, whom I work, I, whom I work with, uh, will tell you I'm not a big fan of code replication. Keep it dry, do, don't repeat yourself. Uh, so in Redwood, um, it's just gonna be one theme and you will need to contact uh, us at University Communications to unlock the more official branding. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit. Uh, we want to have an easy migration path between Cardinal and Lagunita, so I have actually been just copying a lot of the code and modernizing it a little bit. Uh, but most importantly, we want to leverage Decanter, and I think most of you uh, raised your hand saying you are familiar with Decanter, that's Stanford's new design and pattern library. And that has just really accelerated our work, and it's fun, so it's been a nice treat. So. Uh, those are the goals of Redwood. So let me just show you around a little bit. Spend a little time uh, kicking the tires. So here's the front end of the site. And right now I have it with the official branding. So we have the official lockup. Uh, we have the nav. We have our uh, brand bar, our search. And all of these components came out of Decanter. So uh, those involve very little uh, effort on our part, um, including our nav, our standard drop down nav here. So we have a nice banner image on the home page. Uh, there's two options, as you know, if you've set up WordPress sites, how you want your home page laid out. You can either have it be a list of posts or a static page. So this is how our list of posts looks. And then we have a few custom widgets. As I mentioned, our WordPress themes, there were a few uh, features that we needed in Yukon. So we thought we'd make them available to others as well. Uh, so this is called the Well widget. Uh, and this is called the Info Box widget with a little fun awesome icon here. And those are custom features. Those are not vanilla WordPress. And then down at the bottom, we have an area for flat footer. If you're familiar with WordPress, this is implemented as a sidebar and you can drag any widget you want in here, but we have some specific widgets that we recommend. Uh, our social links widget is uh, another custom widget that we provide, but this is just an out of the box WordPress text widget. And then we have our global footer here. And again, our global footer just came right out of uh, Decanter. We had uh, no development time for that. So that's our home page. Um, I can show you what a post page looks like. Uh, so we have a featured image here, and this is optional. I'll show you how to customize that. Uh, we have our titles, um, images, text, uh, the normal stuff. 
We have a few different layout options. We are recommending that you do not use a left sidebar. So our posts right now are using right sidebar. And again, if you're familiar with WordPress, you can drop any widget you want in there. So this is another custom Redwood widget, the hero image widget, and that has a few options, which I'll show you later. This is a custom widget, the author widget, and that's obviously optional. Uh, and I will show you that. And again, here's our info box widget. So we have our static, that was a post page. This is our static page. You'll notice it has a different layout and that's configurable uh, and it has different widgets in it. And then we have our archive pages. Uh, so you can see all the posts in a particular category. You can see all the posts uh, for a particular date. So uh, this is kind of how the front end of it looks. So pretty nice, but the cool bit is actually being able to customize this. So let me take you into the back end and show you uh, the customizer. So WordPress, um, forget, it's been at least, the customizer existed in 2014. Uh, so the customizer has been around for uh, several versions of WordPress now, and it is super nice because it is an interactive way to control your website. So uh, this customizer, can everybody see this okay? Do I need to zoom in? Let me zoom a little bit. That might be a little more helpful. So, so uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, mostly vanilla WordPress, but I have added some uh, custom Redwood features to the customizer here, and the API is super easy. Uh, so it's kind of fun to add custom controls here and then watch them behave interactively. So let me just walk you through quickly how we uh, go about, once you've installed uh, Redwood, how you're going to go about customizing it. So site identity uh, is an out-of-the-box uh, section in the customizer. And in particular, site title and tagline are out-of-the-box. But I've added a few options here. And in particular, I mentioned the level of branding. So we're gonna have just one theme, uh, but with different levels of branding. And if I get rid of this, you'll see that the branding changes. The lockup disappears and uh, you get the uh, less official branding for the site. And when I put this back in, you go back and you get the official lockup, uh, site lockup. So uh, this uh, is obviously a meaningless blurb, it's a hash, and in order for you to enable uh, official branding, you must contact our office and give us your site URL. We'll look at your site URL and make sure that you qualify uh, to get the uh, official branding. And if you do, we'll send you this hash. And all you do is when you get this hash, you paste it in there, and you automatically get the branding. So uh, another option, you'll notice we have the brand bar up here. You have the option of displaying the brand bar, or if you prefer, you can just uh, display a small stroke. Uh, and the stroke is in the official Stanford color, Cardinal Red. If you do not display just the stroke and you want the full brand bar, you have a couple of options as to how you want the brand bar to look. And notice um, this disappears. This took me a little while to figure out, but it's so cool. So <laughs> disappears when it changes. Um, so you can change the color, and these are official colors in our Stanford uh, pattern library. Uh, these are the options for the colors. So you have cardinal red, bright red, black, and white. So. And then uh, this is um, out of the box WordPress. And honestly, I don't honor these two things yet. I'm gonna, I still have a little bit of work to do to honor those features. So, but that's how you control the overall identity of your site, uh, your site title, your tagline, and what level of branding, how you want the branding to appear. This is a custom panel that Redwood has added. We added it in Cardinal and Lagunita. Uh, and we're carrying it forward in Redwood. In Cardinal and Lagunita, we just offered one option, but now we're giving you six different options uh, for what you want this header image to be. This only appears on your website, but you can cycle through and choose uh, an appropriate header image for yourself. 
If none of our suggestions look good to you, again, vanilla WordPress, you can upload uh, new header images and choose that. Uh, I notice, uh, you'll notice that we have a recommended size here. And when you upload the image, you'll be given the opportunity to crop your image. Also in native WordPress, you have the option to have several images and randomize them. So if I had uploaded other images, I'd have the option to randomize them. So you get a little fresh look every time you come to the home site, or you can just randomize through our suggested images. Um, so we have a couple of options in addition to this. This is uh, also uh, custom to WordRed, uh, Redwood, WordRed. That's a little dyslexia. <laughs> so, um, so you can limit the banner image to only be content width, or you can make it be full width. Isn't this nice? Isn't it cool that you can just like interactively see how it goes? Yvonne and I have been playing with this, and it's like. It's so fun. <laughs> so so. Um, you also have the option of uh, adding some text here. And if you do that, um, you might actually want to put this in an H2. And I have that uh, sample text there for you. If you do want to have some text floating around on your banner, you have an option of where you want it to be based on your image. So you can have it uh, all four corners, basically. So, and if you don't want it, just delete it. So, so again, that's uh, custom Redwood. Um, menus, uh, this is vanilla WordPress, but we've added a couple of options here. So in particular, we currently have uh, two nav locations. Only one of them has been implemented, the top nav. And if you are using the top nav, notice that the default uh, out of our Stanford pattern library in Decanter is a light background for the main nav bar and dark backgrounds for the uh, drop downs. But if you prefer, you can select a light background for the nav bar and a light background uh, for the drop downs. That's nice. And then you also have some options about where you want the nav to appear, left, center, or right. I love this thing. So cool. So, um, doo -doo -doo. widgets I'm going to skip over in page layout. Uh, homepage settings is a default uh, WordPress. So there are no changes here, but you can set your home page to either display your latest posts or your static page. Uh, so you can build a static page and have that be your home page. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back. Uh, page layout. I uh, had uh, tried to draw your attention earlier to the different layout options. So we have five categories of layout options. How do you want your home page to be laid out? Do you want it to be a left sidebar, both sidebars, uh, right or left sidebar, both or none? So by default, everything is set to be right sidebar, but if you want, you can show uh, both sidebars. Unfortunately, due to the resolution here and the fact that um, this customizer is taking up so much of the screen, you're not actually getting to see uh, both sidebars uh, in this view. And I do have text here to tell you, uh, because it's responsive, the columns will stack. So you also have default layouts for pages and posts, uh, but within an individual page or an individual post, you can override the defaults. So you can say by default, I want my interior pages to have the left sidebar. And that's an example there, but you can also uh, have it show the right sidebar. So, and then author pages, you might uh, have a special layout for that. And then there's an other category and that cannot be overridden. So, so those are some uh, page layout options. On the author page, this is again a, um, a custom panel that's specific to Redwood. So let me get to an author page here. 
gonna make those be links. Oh, here we are. So you have an option here as to whether or not you actually wanna show any information about the author in line. Uh, if you don't, you just see their list of posts. If you do show it, you have an option about what information you want to show. Uh, you can show or hide their avatar, show or hide their website, show or hide their email. If you do show somebody's email, realize that that applies to every author on your site. So you wanna make sure uh, that all your authors are okay with having email links on your site. So um, we also have a widget that displays author information and uh, that is controlled somewhere else. So you're probably gonna want one or the other, but here's our little author widget as well. General options, again, this is custom uh, to Redwood. So how do you want the featured image to appear? So a lot of our small sites, they really don't have very good art. Many of them don't have featured images. So you can choose whether or not you want the featured image to appear. Uh, and you can choose a number of our sites. We don't actually want to display the author on a particular post. We just want to show the date. So we, uh, you can control or hide whether or not the author is shown as well. And then if you are on a listing page, for example, a topics page, you can choose whether or not you want to see uh, just the teasers or do you want to see the full posts? Uh, a lot of websites uh, I've seen show the full posts, which seems kind of silly to me, but um, there you go. So <laughs> you have that control. And do, do, do. additional CSS is just vanilla out of the press word, uh, out of the box WordPress. And then our widgets. Um, you can uh, use the customizer to control which widgets appear where. I will draw your attention to the fact that we have different sidebars for the home page versus the uh, interior pages. So often people want their home page uh, to look a little bit different. So you can choose to put different widgets on your home page as well. But those are more easily seen, in my opinion, uh, in the more traditional interface. I'll go ahead and publish all my changes. Anybody not like this customizer? Isn't it fun? I like it. It's like, ooh, let's just fiddle around with all the things. So, and it's so exciting when you get like custom panels in there. You're know, like, oh, and they was, no, 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 sorry. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's just take a look at some of the widgets that are available. All of the widgets that we've made available uh, are started with the word Redwood. So we have this author widget a hero image widget, info box. We have a page map, social links, and Redwood Well. And I mentioned that we have uh, two different sets of sidebars. We have a left and right for the home page, a left and right for every other sidebar, and then we have a footer area to put those widgets in. So, um, social links, we recommend sticking that in the footer. And you have this list of options uh, to add links to your site. If you don't put a URL in this, uh, that icon won't show up. But we support Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Apple, iTunes, U, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and now Reddit. That's new in Redwood. So, and you can see that on the front end of the site down here. That's this widget here. And let's see here. So our hero image widget, if you don't remember there was an option as to whether or not to display the featured image in line. Uh, if you do that, the featured image can get pretty big and a lot of sites don't really have good art. So you can use this hero image here. And if you choose to, you can use the featured image and just put the featured image in a sidebar on the post page. And that actually has a nice look to it, uh, if you like that. If you do not have a featured image on a post, or if you don't want to display the featured image, you can also display just a, a default image, which is what I have displayed here. This is our hero image widget. And let's see, we have our info box. There's nothing terribly exciting about this. Uh, this is uh, carried over from Cardinal and Lagunita. We just have a little fun, awesome icon and areas for text. And on our left sidebar, we have um, 
uh, something called a well. If I go to the home page, which is not currently displaying that left uh, sidebar. Another nice thing is if you're logged into the site, you can just go to the uh, customizer straight from the admin bar. And, oh wait, I was not actually on the home page. So, in the about page, there we go, so. Okay, um, I think that's kind of all I want to show on the front end here. Get back here, finding the back end. So, any questions so far? Nice little after lunch nap time. Okay. So, all right. Uh, so, let me just talk a little bit about. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Sure. Um, so, do, do, do. let me come back here. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you for sharing, though. Widgets. So the author, the options for the author, uh, where you want to display it. So do you want to display it on the author page? And this would be a good choice if in the general options you had said do not display the author information in line. You can choose to stick it on a sidebar. You can also display it on post pages. So every post could have this little widget that has more information about the author. And then if you do choose to display it, you have the same options uh, as you did for the um, author page, what information to display. Do you want to show their avatar, their website, and or their email address? So, and let me actually go look here. You will notice uh, I am a prolific writer. I write in detail about a broad variety of topics. Um, so uh, basically I went into a bunch of different Stanford sites and copied and pasted their content and attributed it all to me. So, um, but this is, uh, this is what the widget looks like. So does that answer your question? Yeah, cool, okay. Anything else before I go on? All right, cool. So let me just talk a little bit about uh, how we're building this out. And again, I mentioned uh, several times now, Decanter, Stanford's new pattern library. Um, Yvonne and I have been working on this pretty much heads down for a couple of months now, and I would say 70% of the work that we put into Redwood, we actually put into Decanter. So as we're building this site on top of Decanter, we're actually fleshing out decanter with real world use cases of what we actually need. So um, the site uh, was originally built in Figma. Um, let me just go, I apologize, I should have loaded this up first. Um, so our, we, uh, our designer on our team, John Holloman, sadly he left us in March. Uh, but he started working out, uh, working out the uh, WordPress design in Figma a little bit before he started building Decanter. So it was his work um, in designing uh, the WordPress themes that I think encouraged him to start building this pattern library because every single page he was having to redo whole new components. So um, a lot of the WordPress elements are represented in uh, Decanter, but in fact, um, uh, Decanter is actually more up to date. I think he got, um, uh, he finished the design uh, quite some time ago, and then got started building on, um, on the pattern library and evolved his design language going forward. So some of the things that he has designed actually in um, uh, for the Redwood, uh, actually we're ending up using what's in Decanter 
more than what he designed specifically for redwood. So, um, so here are some of his designs in Figma. Um, but again, uh, most of this, a lot of this has been uh, rolled into the canter. So. Um, decanter, uh, if you saw earlier, uh, uses a twig templating language. It's built using KSS, uh, which allows you to match up um, CSS and JavaScript with twig. And I had never built a WordPress theme before with a twig templating language. I had built uh, with the Smarty templating language uh, several years ago, but never twig. But the fact that Decanter has its markup in Twig files inspired me to use Twig in this theme, and I'm so glad. Oh my gosh, this has uh, really sped up our uh, development effort hugely. And we are using a number of Twig templates just directly out of the Decanter library. We're not even bothering uh, to copy them, copy them into the WordPress space. And that has just been super fun. So. Is anybody here unfamiliar with a templating language? Okay. Um, so the nice, the best thing about a templating language is it allows you to really separate your HTML from your PHP. So if you looked at the code for Cardinal and Laganita, which I was pretty proud of five years ago, thank you very much. But there's a lot of HTML <laughs> kind of interwoven in my PHP and a lot of the markup gets spit out out of PHP code. Um, using Twig templates, that just is no more. So Yvonne here, our front end developer, she can take complete ownership of the, not just the CSS, not just the JavaScript, but also the markup. And um, she doesn't have to fuss with the PHP. She's very industrious and, uh, uh, and exuberant, so sometimes she does fuss with the PHP, which is very helpful, thank you very much. Um, but uh, she doesn't have to. Um, so basically what you do on the PHP end, read the data out of the database, and I just create an object, and then I say render this twig template and here's your data. And if my object, my object has the right names for it, you can just use those names in your Twig template and the data just appears. And it is super fabulous. So loving that. So Twig is a, a templating language that's available uh, for any PHP site, but specifically um, there's something called Timber, which is a, a library that allows you to easily integrate uh, Twig into WordPress. So it manages understanding the posts and the author and knowing what page you're on. Um, and in particular, Timber has a starter theme and that's what Redwood was built on top of, was the starter theme uh, straight out of Timber. So, and it was actually pretty useful. So um, again, I'm super excited that we're using uh, the Twig templates and I love having our markup being able to just pull it straight out of Decanter. So, and I did draw your attention to a few items that were just straight out of Decanter. Um, but also, um, this card format is pretty much straight out of Decanter. Yvonne, do we have any customizations to the card format? Yeah, yeah, so straight out of Decanter, we can get that. We're using our modular spacing, using the topography uh, straight out of Decanter. So that stuff just all comes for free. So, uh, well, free. We built it, but we built it in the canter. <laughs> so so it, it's available to you guys for free because uh, we've already built it. So, um, and then in terms of our build environment, uh, one thing that wasn't covered earlier this morning was how do you actually get the canter rolled into your project? Uh, right now, it's just living in a GitHub repo. But if you're familiar with NPM, you can uh, install NPM packages and point them straight at a GitHub repo. And that's what we've done. Currently, we are pointing straight at the master branch because, as I mentioned, as we're developing in WordPress, anything that we think can and should be shared with the broader community, we actually put it into Decanter, and then we need to pull it back down into uh, Redwood so that we can use it. Um, 
at the time that we launch this, of course, we'll actually cut a release and we'll point at a specific uh, set of commits so that the code isn't changing out from under it. Um, I had mentioned uh, in the Decanter presentation earlier, uh, Decanter is now built on Webpack and Webpack is actually super useful um, when you're building on top of a pattern library like this. So is anyone here not familiar with Webpack? Uh, a few people, cool. So Webpack was actually, um, I think, built by Twitter a while ago. You know, Twitter um, initiated the single page app where um, basically everything is controlled by JavaScript, God help us all. Um, and they had tons of little JavaScript libraries all laying around and they needed to bring them all together. They certainly couldn't, um, you know, include in their header every little component. So Webpack does this cool thing. It reads all your stuff, it figures out what you need, and then it assembles it into a nice compact uh, little, uh, little package and you only have to include one asset then. So you only have to include your JavaScript and even your CSS by default, uh, Webpack even sticks your CSS into your JavaScript. Um, most people override that default as we did in Decanter and as we're doing in uh, WordPress. But what's super nice is we can write our SCSS and we can say, import this file out of, out of Decanter and oh, import this asset, we need this background image out of Decanter. Oh, in our JavaScript, we can say, give me this little piece out of Decanter. And then because Redwood is built in Webpack, it reads and then it just sucks in just exactly what we need. So we're able to use the individual pieces out of Decanter that we need in our theme without having the bloat of having to load the entire thing. So if you do not use Webpack, you can still use Decanter, but the way you'll use it is to load up the entire CSS file and load up the entire uh, JavaScript. Uh, the JavaScript is very small, it's really just an app right now. Um, so you'll get a little bit of bloat. But if you build your sites using Webpack, you can cherry pick and just have a nice lean, uh, lean thing. So one of my to-dos in the Decanter project is to provide a sample Webpack environment for people who actually want to build in that way on top of Decanter. Uh, we have a couple things now. Scott built his um, uh, event calendar using Webpack cherry picking out of Decanter. Uh, Redwood, as I'm saying, is built cherry picking out of Decanter and Webpackified. So it's pretty cool. Karina, do you have a question? <laughs> why, why are you a plant? Um, that's two slides down. So, <laughs> so. It is. Yes, it is. So let me just uh, give credits first and then I'll answer your question. So who built Redwood? Uh, so on the university communications team, our former designer, John Holloman, as I referred to a number of times, did a ton of work building out the WordPress design and then leveraging that to build out uh, Decanter. And uh, he's no longer with Stanford, um, but he was the primary designer. Uh, Yvonne Tang here is our front end developer and she's doing the bulk of the work because most of this is skinning vanilla WordPress. And I mostly just lounge around on the back end developer. So I just kind of lounge around and say, work harder, Yvonne. So, and she does, it's amazing. <laughs> so I just, I just keep doing that really. So not entirely true, I'm doing, I'm doing a little bit of, doing a little bit of WordPress work on the back end and setting up the build environment. But that's the UCOM team. But I gotta give props um, to web services. Um, I, you're sick of hearing the word decanter, but we would be so far behind if we didn't have it. And I think the key players uh, that we've been leveraging, the, we've been levering, leveraging the work of Kerry Augenstein, Joe Knox was just a, a god over there. He had his foot in both camps, design and uh, front end. And then Shay McKenney is one of the best developers I've ever worked with. And he's the project manager uh, 
for the decanter project and he's just been awesome so redwood would not be anywhere near where it is uh, with uh, without the work of the stellar team over at web services so major props to them and one of the I had to change my quote. You guys didn't do the quote slides in your decanter presentation, did you? So we had quotes about why is decanter important to me. And mine was, I want to work with web services. <laughs> and I got to. So, yeah. so uh, now on to Irina's question. Uh, how do you get Redwood? So first, obviously, you must be affiliated with Stanford. So sorry, fellow who isn't from Stanford. <laughs> I know you're bummed, but we have, you know, there's job openings, so, um, so what the heck. Um, but Redwood uh, will be available coming to a website near you soon, uh, sometime this summer. Um, just yesterday, we were going through our sprint planning and really trying to nail down our punch list of what we need to do. And I reckon we got about another month of work or so, um, but it'll be coming soon. Um, ways to get it. Uh, we do have this WordPress themes uh, .stanford .edu, and let's see, uh, currently uh, Cardinal and Lagunita are the only two themes represented there. When Redwood becomes available, I'll be adding it to that site. And we do have um, uh, links down here at the bottom to request the theme. Um, Another option will be uh, just to submit a service ticket and ask for it. And again, if you're going to want the full branding, you're going to have to uh, submit a service ticket and send us your URL so that we can confirm that uh, that's appropriate and then give you your hash. So, and then I had mentioned we have a little WordPress tool that spins up WordPress sites on AFS. Um, AFS is... Uh, currently being retired, <laughs> and there's a sunset and end of life plan for that. Uh, web services is, I believe, um, the lead for finding the right replacement, finding the right host for uh, all of those sites. And I honestly don't know what the plans are in terms of a, a, a new spinner upper thingy, um, um, whatever new host they end up with. But for as long as the current, uh, spinner rubber thingy works on AFS. Um, John would say I'm a good word comer rubber with. Um, <laughs> so, but the, uh, uh -huh. Yeah, so for the benefit of yeah, for the benefit of uh, folks on the Zoom, I'll just repeat. Uh, Scott was saying if you have a Stanford ID, you can go to domains.stanford.edu and request a WordPress site. Um, if you just want to play around with uh, WordPress, uh, excuse me, I honestly don't know what the policy is around actually publishing and building real uh, websites with that, but that does exist. Uh, if you do go that route, you're going to have to specifically request uh, a Stanford branded theme, either Lagunita or uh, Redwood. But uh, again, back to the um, WordPress spinner up your thingy. Um, uh, as long as that exists, currently Lagunita is the default theme, and when Redwood becomes available, um, depending on how long that's going to be around, I may uh, be able to work with them, and Redwood might become the default theme for that if uh, it's going to be around long enough to make it worth that effort. So, uh, but that's how you will get it, and when you'll be able to get it. Did that answer your question, Arena? Oh, 
<laughs> okay. So, any questions, Jamie? Ah, I utterly failed to mention Gutenberg. That's why there's another month worth of development. So, <laughs> so yes, absolutely. Of course, uh, we're building it on the uh, latest version of WordPress, and we are using the Gutenberg, as Yvonne has uh, recently discovered. Um, for example, when you put images in using a Gutenberg block, you get a little bit different markup than if you use the classic editor. So um, we're just having to go through every blessed Gutenberg block and <laughs> just, how does this look? How does this look? How does this look? So um, I think it's a little optimistic to use the present tense saying it, <laughs> it supports the Gutenberg. Um, actually, it, it, it's pretty close. We really are just doing a bunch of QA. But yeah, we'll be doing both Gutenberg and Classic Editor. Uh, we have some legacy sites that we need to use Classic Editor on. So, any other questions? All righty. Um, well, thank you. Thanks for your time and attention uh, right after lunch. I appreciate it. And again, I'm JB Christie. Here's my email address, uh, which I often check. Uh, so, um, but if you have any more questions uh, or just want to help out. Um, also, if you're interested in being a beta as we get a little bit closer, uh, feel free to give me a, uh, drop me a note and let me know that you're interested in being a beta. Um, uh, no, but I'll talk, we'll talk about that later. So, yeah. Yeah, there is a Slack channel in the uh, COP workspace, the Community of Practice workspace. There is a Slack channel there, but it's gone kind of fallow, honestly. So, um, okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have fun at WebCamp. Go team. Cool. <laughs>